our video tutorial on histograms, part one. This is a multi-part series on how to create histograms in R and understanding what they are. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Okay, so we're going to jump right in here. We're going to use the data that we've used before, the cycler data, uh, because it's very convenient and it will show us how to begin to think about creating histograms. And it, it's easy to work with because we've already learned how to load this up. So let's read in this data. As you clearly see, it's on my desktop and it has a header. We've used it before. Reads in fine. So the first thing I want to do is get a picture of this. And that's the idea of a histogram is to get a picture. So let's uh, do what I want to call the first attempt at a picture. And what I'm going to use is the plot function, which we'll talk about more later when we talk about scatter plots. But plot functions basically plot x values against y values. So here I want to plot, uh, for example, my cycler one and I want to do CPK one just for example well I need some Y values to go against it and I don't have any so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a repeated vector of zeros and I'm going to make it the length if I can spell it of cycler CPK one cycler one CPK one and we'll see what this picture looks like. It's not going to be very exciting. But what it does do is it shows me my points spread out as they would be along a line, right? So here's a line along the bottom, and here's how they're spread out. It does have a y-axis, and we really don't care what it is at the moment. But we will doctor it up later. But what we can see is there seems to be a clump of variable or values down here, and then as we go up, there's a gap, and there's another gap. And we want to be able to describe this. And how do you describe it? Well, well, one way to do this is we like bar charts before, so why don't we divide this up into intervals and just count how many are in the intervals? And that's exactly what a histogram does. So what we'll do now is we'll actually try to create a histogram, which is really, really simple here. It's just hist. Oh, I should probably put a comment up here. So create a histogram. Uh, and I'm going to take and copy and paste what I had before, instead of retyping it, because you can tell, uh, if you've watched many of the other videos, I kind of have fat finger syndrome, which means I just constantly can't type very well. Uh, and that's okay. Nobody can do it really well, or if you can, good for you. Uh, I'm not one of those people. Okay, so this is a picture of the histogram, but it really doesn't tell us what we want to understand about a histogram yet. So let's put the points back on there. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add those points back to this picture. And you don't have to do this for like any assignment that I'm going to ask you to do. But it is kind of useful to help you understand it. Uh, so here I'm not going to use plots. I'm going to use points. Points is another function that will add on to a previous plot. And it will just put points on there. XY points. Uh, anywhere you want them. And so now if I run this, I get this picture. And, and this is actually what we were trying to do to get you to see what's going on here. And you can see I have a frequency on the side, which is a count. And notice that if I stare here, I have one, two, three points that fall in this bucket. So this bucket or break it broke up the line and it's just counting how many are in there. And you can see there's one, two, three, and that's the height. Here this one only has one and it's on the edge and so it has a, a block of one. This one has two, so you can see the height is two. And this one here it looks like it has three, the height is three. And here if you looked it says this one has seven. If I count here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, it does. Now it's really hard to see this uh, uh, unless you're looking at it. So hopefully you're running along, this along with us as well, and you can actually count these up yourself. But that's essentially what a histogram does, is it breaks it up into intervals, and then we just count the number that are in it. So that's, that's the easiest thing to do here. Now, what we're going to do now with this is we're just going to do a little bit of doctoring to make it look a little bit cleaner, and then we'll stop and move on to the next video where we'll talk uh, about how to do more things with them, and more importantly, how to interpret these things. So let's doctor this up because having a good picture is always important. 
you don't want your picture to look bad. And believe me, I see lots of manuscripts uh, that have really, really bad axes and uh, labels on them. So we don't want to really create that. So we're going to create a histogram and fix it up. So the first thing we'd want to do is we'd want to have the X label. In our case, this is, we'll just put here uh, CPK and we'll just do one. Uh, the Y label is frequency and that's actually okay. Uh, we can put in here a main, which is a header that tells us what we're looking at. We're, so here you just look at histogram of CPK one. And like I said, you don't have to put the points on here at the bottom. I'm going to leave it on here because for this video, it's very instructive to see what we're actually creating. And that's important because we want to know what a histogram does and how to look at it. So uh, this will doctor it up and we can zoom in and now we have a nice title and we have the axes. Okay, so now you can move on to the next video and we'll talk about how to get other information out of the histogram as well as in the third video, how to add some nice colors to it and overlay the histograms on each other. All right, see you then.